Hi everybody, this is Abby with Scrap and Abby and I am super excited to share with you guys that I was one of the lucky 20 participants, thank you Bethany with May Arts, thank you, thank you, um, to participate in another super fun one of the uh, ribbon craft challenges. And the theme for this one is the retro color themed challenge. And these are the yummy ribbons. I'm going to put some white here so you guys can kind of just focus on the ribbons that I selected. She had a total of six on the blog. You submit your idea and if she liked your idea then you could participate and choose up to four of the selections. And so these are the four that I selected when I entered my idea submission. And I'm going to share with you guys in just a moment what that's going to be. So these are the ones I selected. I love this super pink soft um, pom pom trim. It's just, I just have, I'm just so excited to play with this. I can't even tell you on my project. And then this really pretty kind of a mint ruffle. I have this in the white and the lavender. It's just gorgeous. I love to use that. Makes beautiful flowers as well. I will put the item number in the description of the video. Um, I don't have it off the top of my head um, what they what the item numbers are, but this is a kind of a stretchy with kind of that little plastic, um, you know, the little plastic circles, the iridescent circles in the center. Very fun. And then this one is gorgeous. I also have this in. Um, it's kind of like a. Um, chestnut brown tone that I picked out one time and I love it and so I was so excited to get this in this really pretty kind of you know peacock feather teal kind of color scheme. So those are the four ribbons that I'm going to be creating and getting the awesome chance to play with. So thank you again Bethany. I'm super excited and then I'm just going to quickly share with you guys um, the project idea that I have. I'm going to be altering this clock which is just one of the ones from Tim Holtz and I've been kind of saving this for a special project and this is it. So this is the real first big project I've worked on since I had hand surgery earlier in this year so I'm really excited to get a chance to play with this. So what I'm going to be doing, I won't make this too long, I'm going to keep it under three minutes, is I'm going to alter this with some different paints. I'm going to take the face out, the glass face out, and I'm going to make a mini album that comes out of it. And this is going to be kind of I'm not sure if I'm going to make it more of a kitchen kind of uh, retro theme clock or more of a um, just kind of a summer fun, good times, memory type of um, project. That way I can kind of put some photos and things of my daughter in there. So that's the, that's the base of the idea. Um, real quickly, the color scheme palette might use a few sheets out of the corrugated cardstock from DCWV. Some of the cork that's in here, they go it goes along with the color theme. And um, this is from Basic Gray. This is an older one. It's loose seal, but I love it. But some of the colors as I'm flipping through are just perfect to go with this. And then as well as some from Making Memories. This is another vintage pack. I'll be using some of the colors from there. And then also from Farmhouse October Afternoon. So those are the papers I'm going to be kind of pulling from. And I may end up using some of this for the actual mini part, the tags and stuff, the Sugar Chic from Heidi Swap, because I just think that this paper pad and these papers, or excuse me, these ribbons, they just work so well together. I think they coordinate very well. So I'm gonna be um, probably incorporating some of those in there as well. Put the pretty ribbons there for you to look at. This right here, I won't go through the detail because I don't make this intro too long, but this is um, these are some of the kind of the color palettes I'm pulling from for paint. I'm not sure how it's gonna work out. We'll see what I end up with. I um, might throw in one of these flowers. Probably gonna play with some of my Lindy's uh, sprays on some of the white flowers. And I have a really fun idea for the binding um, with one of these rings. I'll show you guys that at the end. And I might play with the actual time face by using some of these numbered brads on the clock part as well. And then I have these really fun sparkly yellow alphas I might use in the project because I think that goes with it as well. And one of the flower punches. And then this is what I'm going to be using. Um, this is how big it is. This is the punch I'm going to be using to make the album itself so it's circular so it fits inside. So I'm going to get to the project. I will have a completed project um, with you guys shortly so thanks for sticking in and I'll see you soon bye okay guys I am back with my completed altered retro themed clock alarm clock with a mini album inside I am really happy with how this turned out this is kind of my first project of using the Tim Holtz clock and I'm just really happy I'm really pleased with the way it turned out all the different textures and this is the back side and you can see the lovely yummy May Arts ribbons that I used on the project. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of share with you guys. So since my camera is up here, it's hard for me to show you when it's standing up what this looks like from the front. But you guys can see the top, what it looks like, how cool it looks, you know, and the different you know, textures on the sides as well as on the little bells on the top. So this is what it looks like on the front. So we're just going to pretend the camera's, you know, a different angle so you can see. So what I did is I have a butterfly 
and I just laid some of that really pretty pink um, stretchy kind of ribbon with the sequins on it and then kind of cut around the shape of the butterfly that way it kind of matched and then I just used some um, uh, gesso on here just to kind of make this kind of off-white kind of just kind of matching with the rest of the tones and the colors I have on the clock I thought that was a really cute way and a different way to use that trim and this is the one I'm referring to so you know you can use it in all kinds of fun ways to add accents to your projects and then on the inside of the rim I took some of this really pretty kind of teal uh, blue trim and I laid that on the inside and then you'll see a little better once I get the mini out I also have this really pretty mint uh, ruffle trim that's on um, on top of the blue so it's kind of like a double layer so this is the mini I made on the inside and when it's standing up this way and I'll put some I'll have some pictures up on my blog of course um, so you guys can see this and it's going to be on the May Arts blog because again this is for the May Arts um, retro theme craft challenge I don't know what day Bethany's going to have this up on the blog I'll have my YouTube video up beforehand just because I email that to her so she can include it in the post but I'm pretty sure it's going to be next week sometime so anyway so this is what it looks like and then what I did is I made just a little mini album out of just some cardstock I used a couple different sizes of my um, circle punches and then you can see it's accented with lots of the um, May Arts ribbon so just to kind of make it a little bit easier and it's kind of a fun decor item as well I have this little ring right here and what you do if the clock is sitting up like this on display you can just reach in and simply pull out the mini album so I'll share the mini with you in just a moment. But here's the inside of the clock. You can see that I did all kinds of texturing on the inside. I didn't go as heavy on the inside as the outside just because I wanted to make sure I was you know, showcasing the ribbon, um, the little pink pom-pom trim on the inside. I just laid that um, with some adhesive onto the lid because I've put the lid on. You can pop it off if you want, but it's not intended for this project to take the back off. It's supposed to, you know, because I, I didn't put the glass in so you can reach in and do that. And this is the beautiful, super soft pink pom-pom trim that you see layered on the inside there and I think this is kind of cute so if you take the mini out and you decide to display it somewhere else or you just you know put it you know your people are looking at it they're not just gonna see a plain background they're gonna see all that texture in the inside with all the different Lindy sprays as well as the circle of super uh, soft pink pom-pom trim I think this is really cute and here you guys can see with the mini out you can see that um, extra layer of that softer mint green trim I was telling you about so this is layered completely um, hope my lighting's showing it's okay all the way around the rim of the the clock and then while I have the mini out while I'm tipping it all over the place I'm gonna share with you guys as well I took some more of that soft pink um, or excuse me the soft mint green you can see the ruffle just kind of peeking out down there it's this one right here I use that um, around the perimeter of the clock all the way around it goes underneath the bells as well it's completely solid all the way to the bottom and then on top of that I layered it with more of this um, kind of stretchy pink sequined um, trim and I thought that looked really cute so that just goes all the way around the base the bottom and I you know, was able to tuck it up underneath the bells and while I'm um, the bells of the clock and while I have the back side up I wanted to kind of have something cute just in case you um, you know in addition to texturing of the back of the clock as well sometimes you know you can put this on a table like this where it's being walked around like maybe an entry table or a counter or a shelf at your work or something like that that way it was pretty um, on the back side too so I wanted to add another touch of those uh, pink pom-pom trims on the back and I just intentionally only wanted three so what I did to get that extra length of pink is I just cut off one of the snippets of the pom-pom on each end and then of course I'm saving those for a future project because I don't want to throw any of my May Arts um, you know leftover bits of ribbon and things away because you can definitely reuse them and then you can see the back side of the bells right here all the heavy texturing and spraying um, this is some of the glass bead that I um, used I'm going to have another video up um, after this one. It's separate, going to be separate from this one. That kind of walks you guys through the different phases of me when I first gesso it, then I stencil it, and that kind of stuff. So I don't want to get too much detail because I really wanted to be focusing on the May Arch ribbon in this particular video. And then I tied on the top of the clock just some of the extra bits of ribbon that I had left over from when I was working on the mini album. The only one that's not tied on here is the pom-pom trim because I really kind of don't want to make that a focal piece when it's on the inside so it kind of pops and then on the back side as well as an accent piece. So I'm going to go and set the clock down and I'll just kind of quickly flip through the mini. So this is the ring I was talking about and basically all I did is I purchased from um, uh, a craft store. It was a bunch of these different types of rings. This one doesn't look like this. It looks more like a wedding band kind of but it was on a bunch of with you know different types of rings. I just wanted to give you a visual of what I was talking about and um, it was on like one of those you know um, 
we call those like the junk charms, you know, the um, chunky charms. And so I just took that and I just used some score tape and I, all I did was wrap that same um, sequined pink trim around and around until it covered it completely and then I tied it on to the top of the mini so this way you it's like I said twofold one I think it looks really cute dangling right here but then also you can reach in when it's in the clock and easily pull the little mini out so I wanted to keep this pretty simple and basic you know not, not a too much embellishment because I really wanted the ribbons and the cardstock to kind of really speak through to this and then all you'd have to do is just put some little tiny photos you could even do some journaling on here so these are double-sided so this is the front I think it looks really cute when it's fanned out like that too so I'll just kind of flip through like this and share with you guys this might be a little bit upside down but I'll kind of try to go through here here I just layered them some more of that same trim just to kind of an accent you could put a photo over top of that and then here as well all this is where you can stick a photo a tiny photo even like the Instagram photos and like um, you know like little tiny Polaroid cameras and stuff really fun this one's just kind of plain because I liked how it kind of you know as a contrast with this one here where I circled around the ribbon and I'll show you when I flip the book over and then the same one on this side here just kind of plain again just to kind of accent off of that side and then this one has some of that pink trim and again you can slip a picture underneath there and this last one, I just added a couple small flowers, um, and then this little the little fishtail um, of that blue or turquoise. And you flip it over, and then this is um, the other side. So you could put it, you know, where the picture is kind of at an angle if you want. You could put it straight on because again, this is just right here. And if you guys are wondering how I got the ribbon to look like that, let me share with you really quick. Um, what I did is I just took the ribbon and simply laid it over the brown circle like this, and then I took another length that um, two lengths that were the same. Um, you know, the same not the width but the same length of the one I was adhering to the actual photo mat and then I just cut down the center I'm not actually going to do it because I don't want to cut any more of this ribbon up but just to show you really quickly just an example I kind of I cut just right along the edge of the blue actually I'll go ahead and just do this a little bit just to share with you guys so this is what I did I just trimmed just like that and then I had this ruffle left and then I kept this middle sheer piece to use on another project to tie onto a tag or something like that so I have these um, I had like think uh, four or five of these strips of just this right here and that's what I used to layer to create that little ruffled effect and I think that's just another fun way to use your ribbon for May Arts um, you know you can add textures and layers and stuff like that as well and then just a simple little you know little um, fold of that one there this one again is plain because I wanted to accent you know with the, the flowers not make it too busy there's just a simple little bow and then again across the top you can put a photo underneath here oops pop that off just a little bit there we go you, can, you put a photo underneath there like that and then this is that really fun circle one I was telling you guys about. I thought that was kind of cool. This is the same technique as what I used on this front one. I just wrapped two layers of it around the circle. I thought that was kind of cool. And this one here, this does not, you can't really put a photo underneath here because I intentionally made this flat. So you could just put like a small photo, maybe you have the photo here, and then just do a little bit of journaling or something on this side. And then for the last page, just another cute little simple bow. So that is the mini. It's really quick and easy. It didn't take me very long to do this at all. I just went through a lot of my um, card, uh, uh, you know stacks of paper of uh, collections and things that kind of match with the ribbons because that's what I was going for is to kind of make everything coordinate so that's really cute I thought and I loved how it turned out so let me show you the inside really quick again so it's really cute you could even stick like a little banner in the back if you wanted to when you took the mini out it is so many possibilities with this and you of course using your May Arts ribbons and trims to hang the banner so I thought that turned out really cute I really like it. This is my first time altering one of these Tim Holtz clocks. I've had this for a while and I was hoarding it and I was saving it for a really cool fun project and obviously participating in the May Arts Craft Challenge is a perfect reason to pull this out and to use it. So just wanted to share that with you guys. Again here's the butterfly. I thought that turned out really cute with that sequin. I really like that. And I'm going to tuck the mini back in and then there you guys can see what that looks like when it's sitting on your mantle. Of course when it's flat it, this is down towards the bottom a bit more but because I'm holding up because the way my camera angle is but I thought it turned out really cute and there's that fun little ring that you can just reach in there and pull the mini out real easily and you hang it back in there and it's just a really cute accent so that is my project and this is my leftover ribbon um I got a lot of course because Bethany's very generous when she sends it to you so I'm going to be making a coordinating mini that goes with this a little bit larger scale like six by six so I'll do a video later of that as well just kind of using up those ribbons and trims so thanks you guys for checking out another Scrap and Abby video and I want to thank Bethany with May Arts again, the Ribbon Lady, for giving me another opportunity to participate in another one of the fun May Arts craft challenges. I love 
doing these. I look for them when they come up on the blog and Facebook. So I'm just really excited that you um, liked my, uh, my idea again and wanted to let me participate. So thank you guys so much. And be sure to watch for the separate video that kind of walks you through the process more of how I alter the clock, the different techniques I use for um, all the different layers and textures and the coloring, and then even some of the embellishments that I made on the clock as well. So thanks guys. Happy crafting and I'll see you later.